Uh, good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Um, this morning, in my role as Acting Director General, I address the first regular meeting of the I Board of Governors since the untimely death of Director General Lamano. Uh, this has been a testing time for the agency. And I believe we demonstrated strength and resilience in continuing to fulfill our responsibilities despite the many challenges we face. I uh, did highlight some interesting developments in the assistance we provide to countries in the peaceful uses of nuclear technology, including the use of uh, a new combination of techniques in China to suppress mosquito death spread diseases. Um, I hope that you all as well will be attending next week's um, scientific forum, which starts on Tuesday. And the topic is a decade of action on cancer control and the way forward. And I would say that this is a topic where um, interaction engagement from the media may benefit our member states as well. You are also aware that yesterday I visited Tehran for discussions with um, senior Iranian officials. And we discussed uh, the eye verification and monitoring under the Joint uh, Comprehensive Plan of Action, the JCPOA, uh, as well as safeguards implementation under the safeguards agreement and the additional protocol. Regarding the JCPOA, uh, the agency was informed about the latest activities decided by Iran related to centrifuge research and development. And as you know, the <coughs> agency continues to verify and monitor Iran's nuclear related commitments under the JCPOA. Any further relevant developments will be brought to the attention of the board. Uh, the agency also continues to verify the non-diversion of nuclear material declared by Iran under its safeguards agreement and evaluations regarding the absence of undeclared nuclear material and activities in Iran continue. Uh, regarding the implementation of Iran's safeguards agreement and national protocol, during my discussions in Tehran, I emphasized the importance of full and timely cooperation uh, by Iran. It is important to advance our interactions, and therefore I also stressed the need for Iran to respond promptly to agency questions related to the completeness of Iran's safeguards declarations. Uh, we will continue our efforts, and we will remain actively engaged. I also highlighted uh, in the Board of the Governors that time is of the essence. That's also a good occasion for me to remind you that the agency's work related to nuclear verification is always consistent with our mandate and established safeguards practice. It is an independent, impartial, factual, and professional. And as far as we are concerned, we will continue to work uh, in the same manner. And this is, from my point of view, essential in maintaining the agency's credibility, uh, not only now, but also in the future. And finally, the agency continues to monitor the nuclear program of North Korea using open source information and satellite imagery. And we remain ready to play an essential role in verifying the DPRK's nuclear program if a political agreement is reached among the countries concerned. I will now be happy to take your questions. Thank you. Question, please identify yourself. Motion pressed. Thank you. Lawrence Nolan uh, at the Wall Street Journal. Um, thanks, thanks for the time. I have a couple of questions, and I might come around for a second round afterwards if you, if you allow me. You said in your statement today that um, on Iran and the safeguards, the times of the essence. Um, I know it's been a year since the public revelation of the Turkazabad site. Did the Iranian officials that you saw at the weekend promise to follow up and clarify the questions you've asked on the material we understand to have been found at the site? How much time will you give Iran to respond? And if they fail to respond, what would you be prepared to do? What consequences would there be? And I have a second question for you. Um, you know, that, that was just one question. <laughs> that was that was one cluster of questions. Okay. I'll ask, if I may, a second cluster of questions. Please. Can we, can we just take this first? No, no, please. Yeah. Maybe yeah. we can. Uh, as as you like. Them. 
as you like. No, please go ahead. Okay. Um, DJ, you know the arguments better than I do. Turkish are bad and, and, and the archives, some people say, suggest Iran is trying to keep open its nuclear weapons options in future. How do you respond to the charge that the agency needs to be more activist in following, following up on people and places that have been identified as part of Iran's past nuclear work, including in the archives, um, and that the agency has been too cautious and slow up till now? And was today's warning about timing of the essence and your visit to Tehran a sign that the agency is becoming more f focused on these concerns about Iran's past work? Thanks. I hope I uh, got them right. Uh, first of all, um, as you know very well, we don't refer in our conversation with member states um, uh, or with the media on the specifics of safeguards implementation. Uh, safeguards work and agency verification work, I think, is uh, the result of a very rigorous technical process. Uh, there is nothing improvised in, in our safeguards work. Um, everything builds on a very solid uh, technical and legal analysis. And I think we owe it to our uh, safeguards inspectors. So for this reason, I will uh, not be able, you hope, I hope you understand, to comment on specific, the specifics of your question. But I could tell you that, uh, in general, um, you, you're asking about how much time uh, uh, we give to Iran in, in, uh, in the context of our statements. Um, again, say rights implementation as well. There is no one size fits all. Every situation is different than another. You have to analyze technical elements, legal aspects, um, the different activities that are involved, and the timelines are defined at the end of a very, a very thorough process and judgment that is meant to satisfy to the best of our abilities the technical requirements under the safeguards obligations. So when I highlighted today the need for uh, timely and full cooperation, and also the need for uh, saying that time is of the essence, it is meant uh, as an indication that uh, our ongoing interactions uh, need to advance even further. And it's part of the process. Um, and I think um, we made it very clear from the agency's side, we continue to stay uh, very much engaged in exploring all the options in making sure that we address all the remaining, uh, uh, all the um, available uh, options. Now, I also heard the number of uh, adjectives, you know, agency being cautious or slow. I will have to, with your indulgence, to dispute that notion. Uh, simply because uh, I think we are very proud of the work that the agency is doing. The credibility is very important. And I think the international community couldn't have a better defender of the international peace and security uh, in this area. What I can assure you of is that we are doing our work based on the very solid infrastructure of legally binding obligations but also practices that uh, we have developed over the decades. And, um, well, one other point, what we are following now and the discussions that we have with Iran, uh, this is no different than what we are pursuing with, uh, in, in our efforts in, in other parts. So the expression of my comments in the statement to the board show indeed the need to advance further these ongoing interactions. And, uh, I would not agree that we are cautious or we are slow. We are very, uh, let's say, um, uh, rigorous, meticulous, and we are faithful to our mandate. Uh, it couldn't be differently, simply because um, you also have to understand the Director General, acting or not, of the agency uh, operates and fulfills its mandate under the authority of the Board of Governors. So there is no uh, let's say, notion that could encourage an artificial progress or process. Uh, if the board, um, in any particular situation, is not convinced that a safeguard agreement or an additional protocol or the path that we have chosen is not the one that serves our mandate, 
of course, the board, the board will react to that. So we are very mindful of all these arrangements, um, and we take our job very seriously, I have to say. Uh, Jonathan Tyrone with Bloomberg. Uh, Mr. Furuta, uh, you referred to the specific word of completeness in your introductory statement. As you know, completeness has a specific safeguards relevant uh, usage. Uh, that is, countries are required to provide uh, correct and complete information about their uh, fissile material inventories. Um, were you trying to suggest something uh, uh, specific to Iran by using that word completeness uh, um, uh, uh, in your statement? Uh, and, and, and once Iran completes its provision of information, how long will the IAEA re require to make sure that, is, that it is correct? Um, and then I have a second, just a very brief question about how you're pursuing South Korea's request to assess the um, uh, safety risk of uh, Japan's Fukushima water release into the ocean. Uh, uh, thank you very much. You, uh, you are inviting me to go beyond what I've been saying in the Board of Governors. And um, again, I. I cannot go into specifics, but I think you mentioned it yourself. Completeness refers to uh, declared um, activities. And uh, this is a um, concept that we operate with in our safeguards implementation. Um, starting a debate on hypothetical scenarios, how long or what may happen, I'm not very much inclined to do that, simply because it will mean I presume or assume a certain course of action. We are now in a process. Um, it's, um, uh, it's ongoing. Um, it's not the end of it. Uh, we've been having uh, conversations, and we are ready to continue. That's the sense of my statement. And of course, from this point of view, um, I will not speculate on how long this could take, but it is uh, obvious uh, we identified, we spelled out the need for a timely uh, cooperation to advance these ongoing interactions, and uh, in a way that's what it means. Uh, regarding the question on the um, uh, communication from, uh, you mentioned a communication from the Republic of Korea, um, we um, uh, do not uh, provide details of our bilateral communications with member states, but the specific issue that you mentioned um, uh, is very well known to the agency because we've been involved and uh, provided um, a number of, um, we deployed a number of expert missions to Japan at the request of the Japanese authorities related to the um, um, uh, decommissioning efforts for the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant, including water treatment. Uh, the last mission took place in November 2018. Uh, a report is already public. Uh, it has been uh, published uh, in January, I think, this year. And um, that also contains advice to the Japanese authorities on uh, how to treat this path of discharge. I hope this addresses your question. Sorry. Um, <laughs> are you um, planning to follow up the last mission with a, no, with a new mission? Are you in conversation about that? Well, um, as you know, uh, issues related to safety and security um, are very much triggered by requests from member states, and these are national responsibilities. Uh, if um, there is an interest, if uh, there is a request, uh, we will engage with our member states, and at any point in time, we have a number of uh, peer review services and uh, technical advice that we could provide uh, in, uh, in such areas. Uh, François Murphy from Reuters. Um, DG, if you can't go into specifics um, on Iran, perhaps you could provide us with a general sense of how your meeting went, because all we've really heard is what you said to the Iranians, and it's almost as if they weren't there. Uh, wh how did the meeting go? What, what, did, what did they tell you? What sense did you get from, from the Iranians? Um, and secondly, uh, your update to the board on the centrifuges that are being installed and the modifications that are being made to the lines. Um, at Natanz, um, 
uh, even the nerdiest among us is struggling to sort of bottom line what that means in terms of output. Could you give us, I realize that you know, going into specifics again is, is difficult, but perhaps you could give us some sense um, of how if, you know, if Iran does everything it has tell you, told you it is going to do, what that does to its potential output roughly relative to now. Thank you. Okay, thank you, and I appreciate because you helped me correcting um, a shortcoming in my comments uh, here. In, indeed, uh, we did have very substantial discussions with Iranian uh, senior officials. I, I was grateful to, uh, to Vice President Salehi, to Foreign Minister Zarif. <coughs> I was grateful to uh, other senior officials in the Atomic Energy Organization of Iran and the Foreign Ministry uh, for the uh, uh, very substantial exchanges covering a full range of issues in our cooperation. And I was pleased with the, um, uh, the, the, um, the tone and, and the um, input that uh, we received in those conversations. That, that shows, as a matter of fact, that the relationship between the agency and, and Iran is a very mature relationship where we can discuss uh, all issues. Uh, and sometimes, of course, um, uh, we need to express the need for more and to uh, pace up, uh, probably, uh, but I think that was the message very well understood um, uh, uh, back in Tehran. And as I say, uh, the visit was very timely to have the chance to uh, go through a number of issues with um, uh, the uh, Iranian authorities. Um, so thank you for allowing me to make this uh, correction. Um, the report that we provided uh, last night uh, reflects in a very clear, let's say, way, at least technically, uh, the developments and the decisions that uh, Iran took uh, as, uh, as part of the JCPOA. It, it's not about our, um, let's say, hesitation to comment on hypothetical, but it's simply that the output uh, is not a simple matter, that you, you calculate the figure and that's the output. Um, and uh, at the same time, the uh, output that we'll be having in, uh, let's say, a uh, few weeks um, uh, is um, uh, probably less important than the output that we have now or the arrangements that exist now uh, in, uh, in, uh, in place. Um, not only that we don't play with, uh, work with apotheticals, but I think the notion and the concept that we are working with in our work, looking both at the, uh, at the issues that we have to handle, uh, are not that much linked to the issue that you are alluding to. We are making sure that uh, we uh, can uh, detect timely any effort or any activity uh, that um, 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 may favor a course of action that uh, we don't foresee. I'm really sorry, Buzz. That, again, just in terms, can you give any sense of an order of magnitude in terms of <coughs> how much how much further this brings Iran in in terms of being able to accelerate its its output, its its in return output? Well, I think uh, again, uh, is not the role of the agency is not to judge um, what what these actions will bring. Uh, I think at some point, if uh, there were some comments, uh, public comments, on what is the expected impact of, of those measures, not from the agency. So you will understand that going into the, the, this direction, I think, um, oversteps our mandate and our role in the monitoring and verification of the JCPOA. As you know, they, uh, we made it very clear throughout uh, the last uh, almost more than three years, I would say, we made it very clear that <coughs> the role of the agency is to provide the facts to allow members of the JCPOA, but also to the board, uh, journalists uh, as well, uh, the reports at some point become public, to, um, to comment in, in the way they wish to and to pass the necessary judgment. So uh, I hope you understand that. Albert Otti, German Press Agency, DPA. I have uh, one more uh, follow-up to your statement that time is of the essence. Uh, I don't quite understand why in the past the IEA said uh, when asked about following up on certain things in Iran that it would take its own time. This uh, um, late DG Amano stressed again and again and again that it's, it's the IEA's own prerogative. They, the IEA will not be pressured into doing anything. Now all of a sudden time is of the essence. Why is time of the essence now? And it wasn't before. Well, uh, um, 
We probably see it simply f strictly from our safeguards angle and verification angle. <clears throat> there may be a temptation for you, of course, to see it in the context of other developments. Uh, why now? Uh, it's simple uh, because that's where the safeguards effort, um, that's when the safeguards effort became, let's say, mature enough uh, to uh, try to clarify uh, potential aspects. Uh, that are linked to the implementation of the cigarettes agreement. But again, you also link it to issues that are not linking them. Cigarettes implementation in general, uh, as I explained, is a very complex, technical, but rigorous process. And uh, what is timely for us um, may not be timely for others, but that's the reason, f let's say, that uh, f for, for which member states trust the IA's work. And we heard these expressions in the board of governors in the past as well. And uh, this is the time when, of course, we also prepare um, a report to the board of governors, uh, which was issued uh, uh, some uh, some week ago, and then uh, the statement that you, you see today. So the board uh, is going to look at all these issues, and uh, uh, we will see how they develop. Yes. Uh, hello, Homo Lesgi from Press TV. Uh, you have in your report uh, the sentence uh, Iran should uh, cooperate full and timely, full and timely cooperation by Iran. And this has been interpreted by some media as meaning that uh, Iran should have uh, some kind of better cooperation with the agency because on the face of it, it looks like Iran is giving all the necessary access or information that the agency requires. So when you use this sentence, what are you actually referring to? Do you, do you think that Iran should be cooperating better? Do you think that the cooperation now is not enough? Can you just uh, elaborate on that, please? Thank you. Well, I have to, um, to, uh, to remind you that um, in Iran, we have probably the most robust uh, verification uh, mechanism that we have developed anywhere in the world. JCPOA activities, measures, but also the Comprehensive Safeguards Agreement and the additional protocol uh, make what is probably the most robust. Uh, uh, timely and uh, proactive cooperation means exactly what it says uh, in implementing uh, the safeguards agreement in Iran, uh, we always have to be mindful of the obligations that derive from that agreement. And we also need to make sure that um, certain matters, certain aspects that derive from those obligations are addressed in a timely manner. And that full cooperation is of the essence from this point of view. So they've not, so they've not been in a timely manner, are you saying? I didn't say that. I only said uh, that uh, full and timely cooperation is needed. So it's going Aki from Nepal Television. Hello. Um, I just have two uh, questions on two different topics. So shall I just give you one, no. and then after the first answer, the I, second one? Because no, it's two different. You, you, can, you can address the two of them. OK, yes, OK. Please. So the first one is a bit of a clarification about the report which just came out. Um, not, without going into the details, uh, because uh, that it sort of mis mentions that the, the, the new assembled one does, has not been tested. And that came with a conf confusion to my reading, that is that means that the, what the, on the third uh, measures are Iranians actually adding on top of what you had reported on uh, August 30th, are the Iranians adding additional those numbers, which is like 52, to in addition to what the, you had reported in August 30th, just. Uh, because of the technicality that I read, uh, the one in August has been, some of them has been tested. And in a new one, none of them has been tested. So it is for me to very simple to assume that, that those are new ones. And I don't want any confusions in my understanding. And then also that sort of gives a quite a difference because that's a big number. So I think for that, I just without going to, into details, I just want a simple answer that, you know, whether it's on top or, you know, it's included. Uh, the second question is a follow-up from the Jonathan's question regarding the 
uh, ROK's request. Uh, you had already answered very clearly, but I just wanted to make sure that uh, are you saying that if ROK requests some cooperation or some active involvement of IAEA on this issue, that the IAEA will pick up the request and act upon it? Thank uh, you. Yeah, I have to... Uh, to, to remember the nuance in your question. Um, the, the report and the communication also issued today on the uh, centrifuges reflects the new developments. So it's on top? The new developments and the numbers that our inspectors monitored. Um, Max, maybe could correct me if... Max, can you correct me? The new request uh, for the... the... The new figures that we included in the text uh, uh, this morning, uh, last night. The, 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 the were also covered in the regular report. Sure. The, uh, the, 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 the new development, uh, the third step, include uh, uh, additional centrifuge that were being installed or already installed with respect to what we have reported in the previous report. So it's in addition? In addition. In addition, there is also additional uh, US-6, uh, additional testing with uranium being performed. So yeah, it, it, that report was meant to cover uh, new uh, developments. And uh, you mentioned that some of them were not tested. I think uh, this is work in progress. And as we monitor the developments, and as I was also communicating, um, relevant developments will be brought to the attention of the Board of Governors. Regarding the second question, my reference to uh, the national responsibility um, 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 is linked to the request from the respective member states to utilize peer review services or missions in its own territory. So uh, country X could request missions or peer review missions uh, on its own territory uh, because it's a national responsibility and confines the decision to the national uh, authorities that are supposed to take the decision. I hope this answers. So that means that then what happens that the, because the ROK in this case is requesting IR, I, IAEA's uh, involvement in the area which is nobody's territory, you know, it's an open sea. So, what what is the procedure then? Because that they want, they are concerned about the radiation, and then they want the IEA to involve in the uh, the monitoring, not just Fukushima. You are doing it already, but more on a broader scale, which is sort of not. ROK's territory, nor the Japanese territory. I think uh, if the, the question may be based on information that I don't have. Uh, but as I said, communication that we have with member states on any matter, whether it's on safety, security, or uh, safeguards, uh, is part of um, um, our ongoing activities, and we don't uh, expose those communications um, um, to, uh, to third parties. But. Um, I have to say that the agency will remain faithful to its own role in those areas. Nuclear safety and issues related to nuclear safety will be treated exactly in the same way uh, as before at the request of a member state for a peer review mission on the territory of the respective member state. Of course, we'll do it. It's based on decision on a voluntary basis, let's say, making use of those uh, efforts. Uh, we'll continue to do so. Um, for, for the rest, uh, if that opens a new territory for us, I'm not, I'm, I think you may have a different uh, um, information on, on, on that matter. Okay. Okay. So I think yeah. we have to move on. Okay. One more question. Yes. Uh, Naif Nofer from Ikhbariya News. Um, an American uh, security advisor um, mentioned two days ago uh, that IAEA has informed the council uh, about the possibility of uh, hiding nuclear uh, materials how would you comment on this? Uh, may I may I ask you to be a bit more specific so I understand nuclear material uh, w where and uh, uh, material uh, hiding material uh, nuclear material from uh, uh, from the inspectors of the IEA. John Bolton has mentioned that on his account on Twitter two days ago. 
uh, that uh, IAEA uh, confirmed the council, uh, informed the council about uh, the possibility of uh, being hiding uh, nuclear material in Iran. Is that true? The, uh, the, the comment that I could make is that uh, evaluations regarding the absence of anti nuclear material and activities in Iran remain ongoing, as I was saying uh, uh, today as well uh, in the board, and that's part of our <coughs> um, um, message that we send to member states in the Board of Governors. You want to take it? Oh, yes. The Board of Governors, I, have, I'm, I apologize, yes. but the Board of Governors uh, already started uh, at 3 o'clock. So thank you so much for coming. Uh, thank you. The DGS, report, in general term, in a report, we provide the total number of centrifuges that are installed. At the moment, we perform the verification. If you compare this total number of centrifuges, or different types of centrifuges that are presently installed, with respect of what has been provided before, you will see that for certain type of centrifuge, there is no increase, while for other type of centrifuge, there is an increase. In addition, what is also changed is that the number of centrifuge being tested with UF6 is in general increase. Is that clear?